So I'm playing with this. This is a solid state Tesla coil. It's an old friend. The secondary is fairly small and the power here is not too high. The driver is the so-called Russian Tesla coil or the famous MOSFET Slayer Exciter. And I usually power this coil with the Rampant DC auto transformer with just a diode. But in this case, I'm using Smooth DC with a full bridge rectifier and capacitors. And instead, there is an interrupter circuit with a 555. This interrupter runs at 500 Hz with a duty cycle of like 12%. Why? Because I wanted to chop the output of the coil and make special arcs, arcs that look like fans of smaller arcs one near the other, and they look really nice. I saw that online sometimes and I wanted to replicate it, but apparently it didn't work exactly well, but it worked at the end. It's just that you need to spark the output of the coil on an object. So let's try this thing, interrupter on, power on. Damn it, it's loud! And obviously with the power of an Arduino and a small adapter circuit here, you can do this. Okay, I think it's going crazy enough. <laughs> I should shield this thing. So, this is my first attempt at a ZVS driven SSTC Tesla coil. And I'm using here a secondary with a fairly low resonant frequency with also a top load to reduce the resonant frequency even more, but maybe a top load in this type of coil is not appropriate because it makes the resonant frequency too selective, probably. Anyways, as driver, I'm using here this ZVS that I made some time ago. This is made with MOSFETs, small MOSFETs, uh, taken from computer UPSs, and these are uh, rated for 60 volts and uh, high amps, like 65 amps. These are uh, low voltage, high ampers. And anyways, as a tank capacitor, I'm using here a polypropylene capacitor. This is 100 nanofarads and rated for 2 kilovolts. This is an AliExpress special. I bought 10 of these for fairly cheap. And as primary, I'm using just three turns of uh, stranded wire and uh, it was uh, five turns then four turns and now it's three turns this to increase the resonant frequency on the primary side compared to the secondary side anyways the primary has been uh, adjusted uh, quite precisely uh, in height and uh, distance from the secondary uh, to match kind of the resonant frequency of the secondary with the primary as power, I'm using my lab power supply here at 21 volts DC and it's already drawing like 3.5 amps. So I'm not sure if I can use a ZVS driver with MOSFETs with an higher voltage and use an higher voltage because in my opinion, it's already drawing too much current and I don't know if something is wrong. Okay, let's try it. Let's turn it on. Super power. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Magic. Anyways, uh, classic tricks. Obviously. Neon bulb. And there's a safety measure in this coil, look. 
and it's jammed. I have to reset it. Just a micro spark. And it's on again. Okay. So this is an update of a previous video. In that video, this one here, I used uh, this low power magnetron setup uh, with this magnetron, with this uh, harness here to not use the original antenna of the magnetron to hook up uh, various types of antennas to a magnetron and have an external antenna of your choice. And in that video, I claimed that you can uh, hook up a coaxial cable to a magnetron and have the power of the magnetron where you want. And here is an induction heater that works with the frequency of the magnetron and it's made with this stupid microscopic coil here. There's just a loop of copper wire like nine millimeters uh, of diameter. And you may think it's too small, but it's already instead quite big because probably the diameter of this coil is already passing the three centimeters of the quarter lambda. But sadly, it doesn't work with iron and steel because probably iron is like transparent at this frequency, but just with a ferrite. This is an high frequency ferrite. This is a slug with a hole also. And this is slid in the pins of components to avoid self oscillations and noise. This, this probably comes from a diode, from a TV or something. And apparently, uh, the way this induction heater hits up the ferrite is not because of the eddy currents like a ZVS driver, but because of the magnetic hysteresis, apparently. Okay, let's try this thing. Filament on, variac on, and let's reach 15 milliamperes of consumption on the magnetron. That will be 60 watts of consumption. Okay, let's place the camera here. Let's pick the ferrite. Let's stick it in here. And the current on the multimeter goes also a bit lower. Let's see if it smokes. Yes, it does. Ooh. 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 Hmm, <laughs> bacon. Okay. Let's turn off this thing and let's see. Where is it? Oh, come on. Okay. 67 degrees Celsius. Or kind. It's cooling. Yes, it's cooling. And the coil is just a bit warmer than ambient. And another two tests. I have here this light bulb with a loop of wire. And nothing. <laughs> Maybe the loop is too long, or I don't know. Probably. No energy transfer. And instead, I have this loop here with a germanium diode and a capacitor for filtering. And with the multimeter at maximum sensitivity, it receives something. but not much and it's a bit odd because it sometimes work sometimes not look at this it's far away and it tells something but if i put it like this it's less i don't know if it's the filament or something or the magnetron operating i'm not sure So
So, I am again at a ZVS driver and a solid state Tesla coil. Here's the ZVS and here's the Tesla coil. A pair of weeks have passed since my last attempt, but today I made some changes, some improvements. First of all, a larger primary. This works a bit better. Duh! Just two turns for the primary with leads wire instead of stranded and probably I should have used a copper pipe because the currents on the primary are insane here. Anyways, not upload. This makes a higher resonant frequency sadly, but probably less selective. I made the better soldering connections for the capacitor and primary. And now this thing runs at like 19, 20 volts out of my bench power supply but still maxing it out at like 5 amps because this thing draws a lot of current but probably anything is correct now, I don't know anyways, I don't like this type of coils because uh, it's really hard to tune it jams easily and the performance is uh, relative at the end so let's try this thing, power on this is the result we are at more than 5 amps, like 19, 20 volts, limited by the current. And ok, let's turn it off because the primary heats up and it's stuck with hot glue. <laughs> I'm a genius. Again. And okay, so thank you for watching my video and bye.